Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another Casual Sundays. Today we shall not be casual. We're gonna skip Casual Sundays because last time I asked you if you want to put questions or ask me questions, general questions about Miss Orchid Girl, and you really didn't want to, so I had to come up with a different idea for this Sunday. Anyway, today we're gonna address the issue of LECA and pH. You might already know that clay or LECA in general is advertised as pH neutral. I'm not entirely sure how that is or how that happens because, uh, sadly enough, my experience has not been quite the same. I have found that LECA does alter pH in the way we use it with orchids in the semi-hydroponic system, not the proper hydroponic or aquaponic systems. So this is the introduction for the video, but I think it would be better for me to show you exactly what I mean. It's one of those topics. So let's take Myoncidium Sherry Baby. You've seen it in quite a lot of videos. It was among the first orchids that I planted in semi-hydroponics, and recently we transferred him from the clear plastic to the white plastic. I'll share with you down below the process so you can see the date of the video and details of the sorts. Now this pot is due for a watering. It is empty, as you can see, there's nothing coming out of the drainage holes. However, for this experiment, we are going to soak it. So what I will do is just cover the drainage holes on both sides with duct tape as uh, best as possible. Hopefully we will not have any leaks. There we go. So I will soak this orchid in my osmosis water. Now, this is not an acidic or alkaline water. It tends to be rather neutral, close to seven. So I will need to stir this water a little bit and I'll come back when the meter settles. Okay, so my meter settled. It's around the seven mark. Uh, osmosis water is very poorly buffered and we'll talk about this because it's an important, let's say, topic. But as you can see, around the seven mark, pretty neutral water. And what I will do with this water in one take, I will fill this pot to the brim, that voice crack, <laughs> but I really want to make this, oops, I really want to make this in one cut just so you see that I am indeed using this water. So we will just let the circuit sit for, I don't know, maybe half an hour and then we will come back, drain the water out and measure the pH of this water. Let's also put a clock next to the orchid, so as you can see it is 820. So a little more than half an hour has passed, it is time to check the pH of this water. So I'll collect some water in this empty pot and I think this will get messy, but it's okay. All in the name of experimenting. Come on, there we go. Okay, so this is more than enough water for us to draw a conclusion. And now the moment of truth. Let's see what's the pH of this water. Oh my. and it's still going up. Okay, so I hope you can see it. It's 8.74 at the moment, 75. And this is only with half an hour of exposure. I did experience higher pHs than this. Hope you can see the actual measuring. So yeah, from a pH of about seven to 8.7, that is a really, 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 really big increase. It's not like it increased it with 0.3. That would be nothing, but it's 1.7. And I did encounter worse cases than this. So if this is not black magic, I don't know what is. Now, leaving aside the Halloween jokes, why does this happen? Why does Leka raise the pH so dramatically much? Well, I'm afraid I don't have a clear answer because the research that I did was slightly weird to say the least. So first of all, I did not find this problem expressed on orchid forums or orchid articles or anything related to orchids. Maybe there is something out there, but it's not very popular. There isn't a lot of it. In any case, I did not find it. However, I did find this problem. I did find a few discussions on this topic, which I will try to find again and I'll share with you down below. It would appear that people did express this issue. But the reactions and responses they got were a little weird in my opinion, in the sense that in the end they were kind of dismissed. Some people were saying, well, no, it's because of the water you're using. Maybe you're using a water with high pH. Others said, maybe it's the fertilizers. There is one answer that talks about uh, 
I'm missing the word, the surface of the leka, which when it gets dry, it tends to activate and then soaked in water, it raises the pH. And in my opinion, it's the best answer I found, although people dismissed it. At least that's my opinion, people dismissed that explanation. So there are numerous accounts of this phenomenon happening on those types of forums but Sally, I don't feel they're taking seriously. There are answers that say, you know what? Soak the leka in vinegar or strongish acid overnight and then you will have no issue. I tried it. I tried the vinegar thing, it didn't work. It still raised pH. Others suggest that you should soak the leka in pre-fertilized water. I did that as well because you know, fertilizer tends to drop the pH. I did that as well, it did not work. Others suggested they keep leka three weeks soaked in that acidic water. I did that. It was okay, but then when the leka dried, it was back to raising the pH again. And without insisting too much on the subject, you will find the links below and you can check the discussions. People suggest that you do soak and prepare the leka. There is a manufacturer, I think, which suggests or actually instructs you to soak leka in pH adjusted water, I think at around five for about two or three weeks. And I think if you do that, it will work only if you maintain the leka permanently wet, not even damp, but wet. However, in our setups, this doesn't happen. This is not hydroponics, it is semi-hydroponics. And even though the setup does never go completely bone dry, it does dry enough and I suspect the leka resets once again and it starts to raise the pH like crazy. I had pHs of 9.5, not even my tap water has that pH. And honestly, it's a little distressing, partially because I'm a slight perfectionist and partially because, okay, let's say that leka raised the pH at 7.5, it's no big deal. We can pH adjust the water by the use of vinegar or something of the sorts like an acid. This is an organic acid for lowering the pH. This is one that I tried. So there are solutions to correct a mildly, let's say alkaline pH. But when it goes to 9.5, I don't know if there is much you can do. At a pH of 7.5, there are nutrients that can be absorbed. At 9.5, the range of nutrients that can be absorbed is very, very limited. Now, does this really affect orchids considering people have used this technique for years and years and everything works fine? Well, maybe not, maybe not at the level it would affect, let's say a vegetable or a cannabis plant, which has fast growth. Those plants need a lot of nutrients fast. Orchids are snails compared to them. They don't need a lot of nutrients and they don't absorb them very fast either. So there is a chance that the water with nutrients we provide in the initial flush is enough to give them some nutrients. But whatever's left in the reservoir, what happens to that water? It still contains nutrients which cannot be absorbed at that pH. Well, I guess I know what happens. It starts to deposit on the leka. And I have a case, you can see it on the screen right now. I really don't use large quantities of fertilizer and with some orchids, I do have that crusty deposit, which only means I'm losing fertilizer. So in the end, this means inefficiency. And if there's something I dislike in this world is inefficiency, money spent for nothing and useless effort. Even though this might not be a huge deal for orchids, I still wanna try to correct it and see if it can be corrected. So for the past two months or so, I tried all of these things. Nothing really maintained that water in the reservoir at the pH I wanted it. I'm not looking for five pH, but at least, you know, seven pH, that would be great. And I tried vinegar as a home solution. I tried that pH down organic acid I just showed you. And although they worked really well in stabilizing my water, whenever it came in contact with leka, it will go all crazy once again. And this is partially due to my water as well. I'm using osmosis water, which is very poorly buffered. In the process of osmosis, the buffer or the carbonic is taken away as well. And PS, if you wanna know more about the KH or carbonic hardness, I'll link it down below. It's a value we measure a lot in aquaristics. There are kits for it if you're interested in it. Basically what it means is the buffering power of the water, 
how fast the pH swings. If you have a high KH, the pH swings when you action on them will not be dramatic. So say I want to bring the pH down in a very buffered water, it will take more quantity of that acid to reach the pH I'm looking for. However, if the water is not buffered, the pH just goes like crazy, it swings. And in aquaristics, this is not what we want. With orchids, not necessarily that important, but yeah, it would be nice to have some buffered water. With the addition of nutrients, you are adding some buffers, but not as much as I discovered. So my osmosis water just swings in contact with Leka like mental, simply because it's very, very poorly buffered. And even if it's adjusted and fertilized initially, it still cannot resist the Leka. So there must be a better way. And I found it yet again in the aquaristic hobby because, well, I think sometimes I do think I know that hobby more than orchids or the hydroponic side of orchids, right? Now, one of the products intended for aquarium keeping is Sarah Super Peat. What this does is to lower pH for those aquariums who have fish coming from acidic waters, such as the Amazonian fish, you know, all those beautiful angel fish, cardinal fish, discus fish. So this is a pretty well-known product in the orchid hobby. Now, what's best about it is that it is a filter medium. It is not a substrate, which means it is hard it's not crumbly. So this is how it looks like. You can see it's granulated peat. And as far as I remember, it did do a good job in my environment. I'm not entirely sure if it crumbled over time. I tend to think it didn't. But anyway, this is the first thing that came into my mind when I thought of things we can actually add inside the pot to continuously maintain that pH down because as I told you, it is not enough to adjust it with a pH down, at least with osmosis water or pure water or any type of water that is poorly buffered. And what do you know, yet again, I filmed so, so, so much content that it would be such a long video and it's a little bit tiring. So this will be another two part video. It kind of fits because today is Sunday. We just had a discussion. I told you about the problems, about my research and all of that. And tomorrow we shall do the actual test. I already potted up some orchids. I did some preliminary tests, which you will all see tomorrow. So we'll just leave it at that today. Thank you so much for watching. And you know the drill. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for part two, regular updates, experiments, all that good stuff. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.